never gonna get out of there. Good to be free again, gotta say. I'll introduce you to my whole tribe and put in a good word for you. See you at the camp. Open up. Don't waste a step. I need a quick word. The Blade of Frontiers. Let's hope Will lives up to his name. We'll need all the help we can get. What can I say? They were eye-catching. Consider me an art lover. I understand why you ask, but memory loss is not as uncommon as you'd think. There may be other causes. Must we? No harm in a little mystery, don't you think? Thank you. I'm sure we'll get along perfectly well. We've been through quite a lot, with likely more to come. Care to narrow it down a little? I suppose we'd go our separate ways. Not a slight on your company, of course. Home. Baldur's Gate. There's someone waiting for me there. Someone I have to reach. As soon as possible. Let's just say it's a very personal, very private acquaintance. Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Find a way to rid ourselves of these things. Personally, I think finding this Halsin is our best bet. I'm not too hopeful that a Gith crash will actually prove our salvation, but worth keeping in mind. I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. Traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. I feel safer already.
Oh, what's to tell? I'm a magistrate back in the city. It's all rather tedious. The Githyanki people have a word for men like the Blade of Frontiers. Shalak. Roughly translated, idealist do-gooder. Or better yet, benevolent burden. His confidence is an asset. His pursuit of valor, not so much. Stand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a safest purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Not books, but slates. Wisdom so profound it is etched into stone. Truth as perfect as the queen who decreed it. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. I expect I am your first. Of course you haven't. They would have cut you from navel to neck. You are no less alien to me than I am to you. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Better is an opinion, but mine is certainly more economical, disciplined, dignified. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist, and a mind flayer is born. Because I do not intend to let this happen. Not to me, and if you stick with me, not to you. We must find my kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Yes, if you give it no further thought. But anomalies lead to surprises. Bad surprises. Besides, what hasn't happened may yet come to pass. Ceramorphosis takes all of you. Mind, body, soul. An ordinary tadpole would eat at your memories until they were lost to the void. But our tadpoles are far from ordinary. I wonder if another factor's in play. 
Many a good warrior savors the scent of blood in the air. There's no shame in a capricious murder now and again. Too many, though. And you waste energy and dull your weapon. My suggestion. Attack with purpose and savor your kills. And if the urge proves too much... Well, I'm sure we can find you a goblin or two to carve up. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it. And she was planning to return. One of the Archdevil's Ariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach. Even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking. The damage she might be doing. A powerful friend with a keen interest in... ...privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. All right. Anything more we should discuss? A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. By all means. Seems unusual to me. Then again, we're talking about tadpoles inserted into our brains by rubber-skinned tentacle monsters. There's nothing usual about it. All the more reason to stick close. I think you'll agree. Anger. I understand. We've been preyed on by elithids, suffered insertion of a mind-bending worm. Bloodthirst is another matter. But perhaps not too big of one, if it's a devil or demon's flesh you're wanting to tear. My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields, flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. No, but he named me friend, and that meant the world. But what of the others? The children never saved. The cries never heard. In the boy's tears, I finally saw the suffering wrought by the villains of the wild. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. Baldur's Gate, born and raised. The only son of a single father. He wanted one life for me. I chose another. We haven't spoken since I left the city. A classic drama. <laughs> a staunch father and his rebellious son. Better heard from the bard's lips than mine.
warlocks in my time. Talented, of course, though sometimes too eager to listen to the devils on their shoulders. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. Think of it as tribute. The kind a king might pay to a more powerful neighbor to avoid invasion. As long as I pay, there will be peace. But should I ever stop, along comes a war. I can assure you, the battlefield would extend well beyond the borders of my body alone. Memory loss isn't usually a symptom of ceramorphosis. If it is, they've forgotten to write it down in any text I've read on the subject. Then again, our case isn't exactly usual. Perhaps whatever's causing our tadpoles to remain in stasis has also affected your mind. If ceramorphosis takes place, all trace of your former self will be subsumed into the Mind Flayer's hive. So, to still be here, if I might forgetful, still a win in my book. We all have those from time to time. I once wished a most impure demise on a colleague of mine who bore the last remaining copy of Etheril's Enchiridion of Enchanting Easements. The first edition, too. As regards to your own morbid little fantasies, I'm sure they're nothing to worry about, so long as they remain fantasies. Seek and you shall find me.
surprise. No time to rest. How much further can I go? Something good here, I hope. I wonder what the next move is. This way. Worth talking to, perhaps. Still alive. So that's progress. Very well. Ah, another. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. There are many answers to that question. None are important. Correct. No. Beyond mortal realms, there doth exist an amalgamation of spirits akin to thine own, ensnared by the treacherous cult of the Absolute, felled in its name. They bear great discontentment with their destiny. For a mere pittance of coin, I might summon the worthiest among them to lend aid to thy undertaking. Most willingly, forsooth. Their passions doth run deep for what hath been wrought upon them. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. My services are all that I can proffer thee. What thou wilt do with them is for thee to undertake. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. Because it is my calling, there is little else to explain. A matter of coin. Such is life. Outrage leading to a singular end. Then I shall wait here patiently until it is acquired. What's next, I wonder? On I go. Ah, another. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. As thou desire.
Looking ahead. I am ready. Good time for a chat. How can I help? I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. Well, that's the spirit. What am I needed? Heading out.
Ah, another. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. As thou desire.
Easy enough. Are you sure? The blade stands at the ready. And just when things were warming up. Always a pleasure. How can I help? With pleasure. Lead on.
Finally, some good fortune. Come morning, we know what to do. The sooner we find the druid house in, the better. I can't wait to get rid of this thing in my head. The same. These parasites are proving suspiciously benign. But suppose I turn. What would you do? Wise. Though, I hope you'd miss me after I'm gone. I think I would if the positions were reversed. But you're right. If we're to make it through all this, there can be no room for hesitation. You're doing well. It's a beautiful night. I think I'll stay up to enjoy it while I still can. Rest well. You know, I've been thinking, reflecting on what tomorrow might bring when we find the druid. Will he know how to bring the worm under control? Will this little adventure of ours be over? <laughs> Why not? You've been to the hells and back, survived the crash, survived everything that's followed. I'm not easily impressed by people, but you're stronger than I gave you credit for. <laughs> A delicious thought, but... The right moment. I'm sorry. I... I need to clear my head. I'll see you later, I'm sure. Sleep tight. A fine evening, don't you think? The moonlight shines warmly on us. The breeze caresses our faces. Hideous. All of it. Would that I were doing battle up there, among the tears. Look above. Watch the moon cross the sky. The tears follow behind it. Rocky bodies tumbling through the sea of night. One of them is my crash. Clear. Your curiosity is to be commended. Githyanki are hatched in creches all throughout realm space. Kaleer is one of many. It's there I first saw a Kithrak mount a red dragon. Where I slit my cousin's throats at the Vaj's command. But enough of this. You are wasting your resting time. Come dawn, we resume our search for a creche. Tingle runs through your head and down to your feet. Ah, there it is. That shiver. Our little brainworms have made fast friends, it would seem. How do you feel? It's natural to suffer a touch of worry. But an Alithid worm should be causing more than mild anxiety. Before the Alithid's unscheduled surgery, I'd felled hundreds of beasts and a fair few fiends. The tadpoles weakened me, suppressed greater talents, but beyond that, I've showed no signs of turning. No nausea, no pain, not even a hot flash.
Perhaps the worm's vat was poisoned. Perhaps we're uncommonly fit. Or perhaps the tadpoles are merely on holiday. We could conjecture all night. I suppose the why doesn't matter so much as the what next. And that answer is plain as the horns on a war devil's head. We get these things out. Let's get some rest. Dawn comes sooner than we think. What's on your mind? enterprising approach to my problem is most encouraging but it is a delicate process to keep my condition stable I do not yet need to consume an item but keep it close by it will not be too much longer <laughs> 